Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, I thought it'd be time to show you guys what we did with this terrarium right here. This terrarium houses the American giant millipedes. Now this is the only species that is legal to keep in Canada. They're awesome animals, they're native to Canada, they're native to the eastern side. I'll put a link up to the video of the video I did when I first got them. But they're, we didn't have any lighting on their terrarium. We've got, now got some nice little LED lighting. I thought let's upgrade it a little bit. And it's also because this species is something that I like to replenish some of the accoutrements in it. So it was a perfect time to go and do it. So let's take a peek. Narcissus Americanus. Now you guys remember when I showed you the terrarium and we said it, oh, it was kind of bland, but it served the purpose. As long as the needs of the animal is met, that it can really truly thrive, then it's fine. But I wanted to create something a little bit better, a little bit more special, and something a little bit more beautiful to enjoy. Not only for myself, but for the animals as well. So I really wanted to replicate a slice of nature. Now millipedes are actually, they're not overly difficult to, to care for or keep in captivity. They're granted, they're not the most exciting animal. They're definitely not super sociable. They're not something you want to kind of take out and handle all the time. This particular species is not one that produces cyanide. So it's, it's fairly easy to handle if should you wish to. You know, just be cautious, understanding how the animal, you should probably use clean washed hands, rinsed hands, or even preferably use rubber gloves. Latex gloves, better for the animal, better for yourself. Then there's no risk of transmitting anything. The main issue with them in creating a, a suitable habitat is making sure that their dietary needs are being met. Now you can see that they, they readily take to eating carrot, but that is not the main component of their diet. Their main component of their diet is all the rotting and decaying vegetable matter that would be found on the forest floor. However, when we look at something like a leaf, this is far from decomposed or broken down yet. When we look at things like wood and bark, if a tree were to fall, it's by, by no means broken down or rotten yet. But components like, a, like some of these white rot woods and stuff like that, these are truly the best bets for them for a natural, natural sustainable diet. A lot, of the, a lot of people that keep and breed many different species of millipedes uh, use a product known as flake soil. And it's essentially, it's almost like fermenting a bunch of different uh, soil mixtures together to produce uh, one that's already started the biological process of starting to break down. And it therefore has just abounds with nutrition for these animals. And a lot of those people have had exceptional success in keeping and not only keeping and breeding many of the species of millipedes. This is the native one, as I mentioned, and it's native to the eastern side of North America. And it is available, you can find it all the way up into Southern Ontario, all the way down to Florida. But it is the only big species that we can actually get here. So if we take, you know, you take down the layers just a tad, you know, you can see all the leaf litter like you'd have on the forest floor. And then below that is just a bounds with life. You can see the these little round spherical things, this is actually, uh, this is the waste product of the millipedes. You can see they've been hanging out here. You can also see it all over the log if you really start taking a look at it. Because that's what we want to look for. We want to see lots of poop bigs, that's what we're looking for. But healthy poops means they're eating well. But you also see all the different springtails and all the other things within this substrate mix. It's a little bit wet right now, but that is just because, honestly, just because I went and just finished spraying uh, when I was doing some changes and setting everything up. But you can see it is just absolutely teeming with life. So millipedes, like the isopods, break products down to a smaller level and then springtails and other aspects of the what we call sometimes call cleanup crew will go and take those products even further and all those products will be broken down and given back to nature where the plants can go and take it up again. Apparently I had the camera out and we put some light on and everybody decided to go away. But we've got that guy there is still a little bit nervous about what's going on. I've got one underneath there. 
And they have produced, I have seen babies. I haven't seen babies lately since I did the changeover. Uh, but also when I did this changeover, I really didn't uh, disturb the whole environment. That is something that I definitely did not want to do. I basically took some components and added components to it, changed a few of the components around a little bit. But other than that, I didn't really disturb the environment a whole lot. Just added to it. We've created almost like a mound of a hill back here with the different moss. And that whole hill is, is filled with the substrate mix, which includes large components of that white rot wood, leaf litter, and all those components all throughout it. So there's different areas of higher moisture, lesser moisture. And these guys can find their little snacks that I've left out for them. I wonder if this guy's going to come out and put on a show for us. There we go. They're truly fascinating animals, completely harmless to us. And if you actually take a look at them, they're actually fairly colorful. It's like a steely blue gray kind of color. That's it. Poop for the camera. <laughs> These beautiful burgundy bands. So instead of the poop being brown, you can see what this guy's been eating. So the poop is now orange. But I think this is a much better home for them. I'll show you in a bunch of the little snippets of the video and stuff of the things that we shot with it. You'll see them, they take an advantage of pretty much the entire enclosure. This is one of those backgrounds, you guys would have saw it in the video that I put us through the link up there, the first one when we set it up. It's a styrofoam background that came with this Exoterra. It's all been covered with soil mixes and stuff, so it blends right into the environment. Now they probably necessarily don't necessarily need an environment of this size. I know a lot of people have kept them and bred them pretty much in like a shoebox, Rubbermaid kind of container. But I am very, very much of the thought of, you know, really trying to mimic naturalistic type habitats. I will never be able to mimic, truly mimic nature in this small glass box. The soil stratifications, the layers, the whole circle of life will never be able to be accomplished within this small square. But we can make sure that the elements that are required for these animals to thrive, well, those are all met 100%. I think they're a very, very unique, low maintenance pet. Well, hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought it was a little bit different. They sit way down there on the bottom of this rack. And I think they're a super cool addition to all the unique creatures that call the Lair of the Mad Aquarist home. So until next time, my friends, take care.